we're going to do today is we're going to kind of find out what money really is. So what you guys do two things that are sitting there right now. First thing is take a piece of paper and tear it out of your notebook. Okay. Next thing what you do is dig into your wallets, purses, wherever you keep your money in. Pull out cash. Dollar bill, five dollar bill. Probably all you had since you're students. Pull out some cash. <laughs> Don't ask your neighbor if you can borrow some of theirs. Okay, so let's say you walk into 7 Eleven. You have these two pieces of paper in your hand right now. You decide you want to get something to drink. You're 7 Eleven, you grab a coffee, put the coffee down on the counter, and you take that piece of paper that you ripped out and you place it on the counter. What's the cashier going to say? Where's the cash? Probably say something a little bit more colorful, but you understand. Now, what happens if you take that other piece of paper that you have in your hand, place the coffee on the counter, and place that on the counter? Then what do they say? Thank you. Probably smile and say thank you. So what's the difference between that piece of paper that you ripped out of your notebook and that piece of paper that you ripped out of your wallet? They're both just paper with markings on it. That's what we're going to get into today, is understand why the cashier at 7-Eleven will be happy to say thank you and give you the coffee for one piece of paper, and we'll probably call the police if you hand them the other piece of paper. Now, to understand why this happens, you really have to understand the entire history of money to understand how money or why money is valuable. Now, I've got this book at home called The History of Money, and it's 300 pages of a painfully boring timeline. There's date after date after date. Not the way you want to learn about the history of money. So in order to help you understand a little bit better, what we're going to do is we're going to put on a play today. And our play is entitled The History of Money. And we have all of our actors, slash volunteers, who are up here today. So we've got a couple parts that each person is going to play. First person is going to be our farmer. Who wants to be our farmer? All right, we have a farmer. <laughs> Our farmer is going to farm chickens. So you're a chicken farmer, and I'll have you go stage that way for now. We're also going to have a barber. Who's going to be our barber? All right, we have a barber. Excellent. <laughs> our barber, of course, is going to sell haircuts. You can stay right there for now. And we're going to have a hatter. Who wants to be our hatter? All right, next in line. Perfect. What's a hat or sell? They sell hats. Absolutely. Okay, you can stay next to our barber. And we're going to have a cooper. We've got a cooper here. What do cooper sell? Oops. Don't say tires. They sell barrels. Okay. So you're going to sell barrels. Next, we need our wanderer. Who's going to be our wanderer? We've got a wanderer. Okay. Wanderer and have you wander over by our farmer. We need a thief. Who's going to be our thief? We have a quick volunteer. <laughs> thief. Okay. Thief, I'll have you hang out with the wanderer and the farmer as well. And our last person is our recluse. What does a recluse do? Stays inside. Stays inside and hides from people. A recluse, I'm going to have you be our recluse. You're going to be over here hiding from people for now. Now, we've got our barber, hatter, and cooper. What this group here represents is our small economy. This is going to represent a city. And our city has three people. And this works out pretty well because they engage in trade. If they need something, they simply go to somebody else and they engage in trade. So let's say that our barber wants to get a hat. What does our barber need to do? Go to the hatter and offer what? No such thing yet. A haircut. We're dealing with a barter system here. Now, does this work out? It just happens that our hatter needs a haircut. So this works out nicely, doesn't it? Hatter gets what she wants. Barber gets what he wants. Works out perfectly. Now, every six months or so, our farmer comes to town. 
because our people need to eat. And he brings our chickens. He farms chickens. <laughs> this is also an improv song. He brings chickens. And of course, he goes from store to store selling his chickens. Now, of course, does he just give his chickens away? No, not at all. He comes to town because he needs stuff, too. So the first place he goes is the barber. So he gets a little, well, you can tell by his hair, how it gets. <laughs> barber chicken all the time. Which is good because our barber is hungry. Do we have a trade? Yeah. Works out nicely. Both parties benefit. Next stop is our hatter. For whatever reason, he needs a hat. You know what? I'll do it. Hatter's yeah. extremely yeah. hungry. That was a good deal. Last stop is our cooper. He needs a barrel for the reason for he needs a barrel. We <laughs> know I need to bear. However, we run into a problem here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Our Cooper's a vegetarian. <laughs> now, why does this pose a problem? Okay, our farmer has nothing that our Cooper values. Now, the Cooper has something the farmer needs, but the farmer has nothing the Cooper needs. And this lies your first kind of inefficiency when you deal with barter. When you deal with barter, you have to have something the other party wants in order to trade. This becomes difficult. So they get to talking, and it turns out that the Cooper would love a haircut. He needs a haircut really bad, just hasn't had a chance to go over there yet. Now, is there anything our farmer can do to get a barrel? We know the farmer can't cut her hair. What could the farmer do? Okay. Go over to the farmer, could go over to the barber. Say, I'll give you a chicken if you go cut the Cooper's hair. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, so we have this trade now. Not the most efficient. There we go. <laughs> now our barber cuts our Cooper's hair. Your haircut, right? And our farmer gets his barrel. So you have trade, but it's not the most efficient. Now this goes on for quite some time. And they're able to overcome these problems by communicating, figuring it out. Who's going to do what? So some time passes, and our wanderer comes wandering into town. This is your problem. <laughs> now, our wanderer doesn't do much of anything except for wander. She really adds no value to the economy whatsoever. However, throughout her wandering, it's tough. Work. Throughout her wandering, she stumbled upon these shiny things that she found in the stream one day. She said, wow, those are pretty. I'm going to hold on to them. So she comes into town, and the first person she stumbles upon is the farmer. He's still in town. Now, the wanderer gets hungry from all those wandering. It just so happens he loves chicken. <clears throat> so, goes to the farmer and says, look, all I've got are these shiny things I found on the ground. Now, the farmer falls instantly in love with these shiny things, because they sparkle. <laughs> so, he decides, you know what, I'll take some of those shiny things in exchange for a chicken. Sparkling. So do we have a trade? It depends how many you want. I don't ask me. You don't have to ask him. Uh, I'll take just a few. <laughs> You'll have to take microeconomics to learn negotiations. <laughs> okay, so we have a trade. Everybody's happy. Wanderer comes into town. The first thing she needs is a haircut from all that wandering. So she goes to our barber shop. Again, all she has of any kind of value are these shiny things. Barbara happens to love these as 